passionate about gender equity and poverty alleviation. And that's one of the reasons why I started Girls Who Code. I'm totally a feminist. And I really looked around and saw, you know, that these are, all the jobs are going to be in STEM and mostly in computing and engineering, like 1.4 million jobs by 2020 and less than 14% of them are going to be filled by women, even though we make up the majority of the labor force, the majority of, of women in college, and it just, it didn't make sense to me. Success to us is, is getting more, more women to graduate in computer science. So as you know, like less than 7,600 women majored, in computer, majored or minored in computer science in 2012. Really, really low. So for us, it's about getting our girls in our summer program to, to go major in CS. So we have an eight-week-long summer program. We call it our summer immersion program, where we put girls, 20 girls at a time, in a technology company and they learn the fundamentals of computer science. They learn you know, coding languages, they learn how to build a mobile app, how to build a website. The last two weeks they actually have their own projects so where they design or create something, whether it's an algorithm or whether it's an, an, it's an app. Um, so that's kind of like our signature program that we have in New York, Detroit, in California. We're growing to Miami, Boston, Seattle. And then we have Girls Who Code Clubs. Because the most awesomest thing about Girls Who Code is when our girls graduated, they're like, you know what? I've learned something super cool and I want to share it with somebody. So they started going to their schools and launching Girls Who Code clubs. And so now we have our alumni that are in schools, again, all across the country that are launching Girls Who Code clubs. So they do about two hours of coding a week with like the gold standard goal of being, you know, doing 36 hours throughout the school year. And now other parents, other schools, churches, libraries have come to us and said, you know, we want Girls Who Code clubs. And so we're launching those across the country. One, one of the most beautiful things I think about Girls Who Code is that people like threw their hand out and like gave resources and gave support and gave help to really start this organization. And the reality is, is when I started Girls Who Code, like they could have not learned how to code. It could have been like a colossal failure. Um, but it was exactly the opposite. It was, it, you know, exceeded our expectations of, of what these girls learned, what they built, and, and the fact that they fell in love with coding. When I started Girls Who Code several years ago, we were one of the few organizations that were out there that were talking about computer science. And every day I feel like someone is starting a new organization, and I love that. I love that our president just made a video to encourage kids across the country to do an hour of code. I love that there's getting more attention to this issue. So as far as I'm concerned, we, we run the internet. You know, women Facebook more, they tweet more, they make 85% of all consumer purchases, so we should be sitting on the other side. Girls and boys are good at math and science about the same, and then something happens in seventh grade and, and where girls think that like math is not for them or science is not for them, and some of that is culture, right? We can still walk into a Forever 21 and buy a t-shirt that says math sucks. You know, we still don't have role models on television or quite frankly anywhere. And I, I would believe for girls, it's like you can't be what you cannot see. And that's why I started Girls Who Code. I do think that there's a sense that girls are just either not interested or not good at it. And I think both of those are absolutely false. Um, and we've seen that through our program. I mean, most of our girls who go through our program can take the AP Computer Principles exam like, and pass it with flying colors, even though some of them started and I had to teach them how to use a mouse. So like their ability to basically excel in, in eight weeks is tremendous. Um, and I think that that's, that's the case for lots of young women. I think they also are really interested in it, except we don't make the connection between computer science and changing the world enough. And we need to do that. When you ask any high school girl, what do you want to do with your life? She'll say, I want to do something that's meaningful. That's going to, again, make the world a better place. And when she thinks about a computer scientist, she thinks about a guy typing at his computer, super boring. And again, the, the, the idea of like making a lot of money as a programmer isn't really appealing to young women as much as it is, I think, to men. So I think we have to make those connections to young girls. I think our world is just going to be a better place with more female engineers and software programmers. Uh, there's so many things that, you know, when I think about the products that my girls have built, you know, they built an algorithm to help detect whether a cancer is benign or malignant. You know, they built an app to fight against bullying. You know, they've built apps, uh, you know, like, help, you know, called Let It Flow to help find a public bathroom when you're walking down the street. Because we all know we need one of those. But you know what I'm saying? It's like they're building things to make their community, their world, their family, you know, better. And we need, we need more people. We need more women. We need more people who are going to do that. My vision for the future is gender parity. 
Um, and my vision for the future is that technology is used as a means to alleviate poverty, not enhance it. I think right now too many kids that are under the poverty line don't have access to technology. They don't have access to computers. They're not getting, you know, they're learning Microsoft Word rather than HTML, right? It's so, there's, we're so far behind as a nation, especially compared to other countries. And the most vulnerable are the most far behind. And so we have to make that a priority. You know, we've spent time as a nation focusing on the S and the M in STEM, but we haven't really invested either dollars or resources in focusing on the T and the E, and I think it's time. Um, because again, those are where the jobs are going to be. I, I really believe that this is the most important domestic issue of our nation's time. We are so far behind. And it's funny, it's like this is the one issue where I actually think we have a lot to learn from Nigeria, from Bangalore, from Shanghai, from the Middle East. I mean, there, it's not seen as a barrier. You know, there are so, it's like my mother, my mother's an engineer, like so many of my mother's friends are engineers, you know, because at that time, Nehru would go from village to village to village, inspiring women to become engineers. And we need that same sense of, again, going village to village to village and awakening our young women you know, to the power of, of computer science. I read a statistic that in the 1970s, 10% of women were doctors and lawyers. And in less than four decades, that number is now 40%. So I feel like if we can do that with medicine and law, we can do that with computer science, we can do that with engineering, we can do that with programming. Especially because now, more so than ever before, like, these are where the jobs are at. You can make $80,000 a year as a website programmer. And for so many of our girls who are underserved, like this is about lifting their entire family out of poverty. I'm in politics, um, and I'm, I'm a total political entrepreneur and a political junkie. And, you know, if I could do it all over again, I would major or minor in computer science. Like, I just think it's a, it's a skill set that you need to have just to exist in the 21st century. Like, I hope that we have a president that codes, like, in my lifetime. Um, I, I wish that I could right now, you know, build an app to help undocumented students go to college. You know, and I definitely feel hampered, you know, that I can't go do this on, by myself. And, you know, one of the things we've done at Girls Who Code is mandate that all of our staff have to learn how to code. You know, it's an important thing that regardless whether you want to be the next Beyonce, the next Hillary Clinton, like, you should learn how to code, period. I also think it's about rejection and failure. So, you know, I read a statistic that by the age of 20, girls are rejected, have three major rejections, and boys have something like 15. You know this as an engineer, right? It's like you got to try and fail and try and fail, and it's frustrating, and you feel like you're stupid and like, oh my God, you want to just shoot yourself, but you have to keep with it, right? So that's what we teach our girls who code, and they feel this exhilaration once they get through our program, like, oh my God, I did something that I never thought that I could do. And what's awesome is like they show other girls in their life the things that they've built, and so other girls are like, wow, if my friend can make that, like, I can build that too. You gotta fail fast, fail hard, and fail often. Like, I think failure is such a huge part of life and a part of like building your strength and resilience. I mean, gosh, in less than three years, like I've lost two major political races, um, but it's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Because like in, that, in those experiences, like I championed women and girls. I championed girls in technology. I talked about issues that nobody was talking about. And so if you don't try to do big things, like we can never change the world. And it's never easy. Like, anything that is meant to happen is never going to be easy. It's always hard. It's supposed to feel hard. Seeing, like, big failures and seeing women fail and, and try again and get up to try again and get up to try again is, is, is a spirit that we need to teach young girls so that they, they do try to do things that are challenging for them. 21st century feminism is about the sisterhood. Like, we're powerful. Like, we're badass. Like, we're the majority in college, we're the majority in the workforce. So 11 million of us can make hiring decisions. It's really not about men and sexism. It's about us. So how do we support one another? How do we hire one another? How do we vote for one another? How do we invest in each other's businesses? How do we mentor each other and sponsor each other? Like, how do we build a 21st century sisterhood that we could, we, that, that could really elevate women to the next level of leadership? Like, that's what I'm interested in.